December release of Home Assistant has brought us calendars, and that, with the already existing schedules, puts a lot of power on how we can automate Home Assistant. Today we will be looking once again at calendars and how you can add them to your automations, or how you can use automations to automate your calendar. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Let's briefly look at the installation or activating of the local calendar in Home Assistant. For that, go to your integrations page, click on Add Integration, type Local, select Calendar, and type a calendar name. You can have multiple calendars. Let's call this one YouTube, and I'll use it to schedule my future tasks for the YouTube channel. Submit. We now have three calendars, the school one I created when I started testing it, work we created in a previous video, and now we have also YouTube calendar. Each calendar is its own individual entity. This one, called YouTube, is one entity called calendar.youtube. In developer tools, if we check states, we can see that the calendar has different states. They are on and off, depending if there is an activity currently running when it's in the on state, or if there is no activity or no task in the calendar, then it is off state. But it also has multiple attributes, and we will be using those attributes today in our automations. Those calendars that we've seen in the integrations page are calendar.school, which is currently off, calendar.work, which is off, and calendar.youtube, which is off. These two calendars have something in them. For example, this one is telling me that the next message, meaning next event, will be Luca School. It starts at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning and finishes at 1.30 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. The description is missing and friendly name for the calendar is School. The other one is a calendar work, messages lunch with client, starts at 6th of January 2023 and the description is Lunch with President. If you activate the calendar integration, on the left side you will have a navigation bar called Calendar. Clicking on it will open the monthly view. This is the default view with today's date selected. You have now option to see weekly view, list of today's tasks or events, and a list of what's upcoming in the next few days. You can select and activate only one or multiple calendars. By default, all three calendars are enabled. Let's look at some of the problems with the current implementation of the local calendar. First of all, if you already have an event, you will not be able to edit it. You can just delete it. If you press delete, you will be presented with the selection to cancel, delete only this event or delete all future events. That means that the prior events will still exist, but from that one that you selected and all future events will be deleted. And this is important if you have reoccurring events. Yes, that's very annoying and also problematic not to be able to edit the current events. But then again, you can delete them and recreate the new one. The second thing that a lot of you have asked and wonder how you can do that no, you can't. You can't currently sync this local calendar with the Google Calendar. Maybe that's something that will come in the future, but at this point, no. The calendar itself doesn't have any services related to that. If we go to Developer Tools, Services, and try to look at all the services that exist currently, unfortunately, there is nothing currently in Home Assistant that allows you to create events from a service. That means that you will have to create each and every calendar event by hand, not by using automations. But good thing is that we can use calendar inside Home Assistant as an automation trigger. So let's look at a couple of examples and maybe they'll inspire you to do something similar. For the purpose of this video, I have created already two automations. One is called Call Automation and the other one is called Calendar Zeta School Wake Up. Let's look first at this one here. This one is a typical case of using this to trigger an event in Home Assistant. 
And for example, if you manage your work schedule inside Home Assistant, that can be used to notify you there is an upcoming meeting, to change the light, to give you text-to-speech notification or to send message to your mobile phone. We are using calendar trigger on the calendar work. And you have to be careful to select the calendar you want to track in this automation. The trigger can be based on the event start or event end. This means that the trigger will be triggered on start of the event or at the end of the event. For example, if I would create a YouTube notification for myself that I have stream at Saturday at 6 p.m. and it lasts at 8 p.m., I could have one trigger that would, for example, at 8 p.m. on the event end start flickering these lights. And that could be a subtle signal for me to stop talking and end the stream. If you do not set offset, it will be default at 0 days, 0 hours, 0, 0 minutes and 0, 0 seconds. And for me, for some reason, it is at the after, which doesn't really mean anything because it's same 0 seconds after or before the start of the event. Since this trigger will be triggered on any event in the calendar, we want to be specific and for that we can use the message. Message is the title of the event that we put in the calendar. In this case, I'm looking at the entity work, which is a calendar.work, for the attribute message and it has to make the state call. That also means that in the future, each and every event that I want to receive notification from Home Assistant has to have call as its subject. Then when Home Assistant sees this call as a subject or as an attribute for the message, it will trigger this automation. And of course, last thing you can do is create some kind of action. Here I'm using notification that sends me message, you have calendar work message calendar event soon. If you are using descriptions in a calendar, you can replace this message with description. And that way you will receive notification on whatever notification service you are using that you have stream starting event soon. Okay, now let's create one event for the YouTube and also create automation to go with it. Let's go to calendar. Let's add new event. We have to add it in the YouTube calendar. It would be called stream. Description will be bi-weekly regular stream because there should also be members only stream. Let's say that it starts today at 18.00 and finishes at 20.00. You have option depending on the type of event you have to set it all day, but also to select repeat. If you select weekly, you have option to select on what days this event is triggered. So for example, normally it's Saturday, but let's put this Monday. And also repeat interval can be set to one week, meaning every week, two weeks, meaning every other week. Let me put this to none and let's add this event. New event has been created and that is today at 18.15, it's called stream. And the stream has a long description. Let's now go to settings, automations, create automation, empty and add trigger. Trigger this time will be calendar. We will select YouTube, event start. We can put the offset here. Let's put it at 10 minutes. That means that 10 minutes prior to this event, this automation will be triggered. Of course, it has to be set to before, to be triggered before the start of the event. And then we need to add condition. If you miss to add the condition, as I mentioned previously, all the events will trigger this automation, but I want this automation to be triggered only on streams. Add condition, state, entity, YouTube, attribute, message needs to be stream. Once again, as I mentioned previously, you have to match the title in the event or title in the calendar to match this condition. Otherwise, this will not work. And of course, we need to add action. Call service, notify, send a persistent notification. In the message, we can write note. I'll paste here the code. 
And what this code does, it inserts from the calendar YouTube attribute called description. And this is that longer text. Note -da -da -da, is starting. Let's press save. Calendar stream notification. Of course, we can add other actions. Service. Light. And save. Let's look quickly at this automation before it gets triggered automatically in a couple of minutes. We have calendar trigger for the calendar YouTube on the event start 10 minutes before the event starts. We have to check if the event that starts is stream or not. And if it matches above condition, we create a persistent notification with note and the name of this event or description of this event. And as you've just seen, the light flickered because the next action was to identify this light. And in the notifications, we have note bi-weekly regular stream. So as you can see, it's very easy to integrate this new local calendar inside your automations. Let's look at two more examples. Let's look at this example. It's called Zeta School Wake Up. This one is triggered based on the school calendar one hour and 10 minutes before event starts. But I also check here one additional thing. Is the workday sensor on or off? You can use this, for example, if you've created the calendar event that runs the whole school year, but of course kids don't go to school when there are bank holidays or similar days. That way, this automation will not be run if the work sensor is not on. The other thing that we want to set, of course, is the state of the sensor, because this one is currently not checking against it. For the entity, we will select the school attribute. And for the message, we have to match it with the title of this event. It's Zeta School. The action that I used here is to run my script to play radio on the Chromecast device. That means that in the morning, if it's a school day, one hour and 10 minutes, and that's usually time my kid wakes up before the school starts to play the radio and to use radio to wake her up. But I also have one additional automation that I'll create just now. And that is the go to bed automation. Let's look at that one. Create automation, start with empty. We will once again use calendar as a trigger, select school, and we will play with hours. This event in the calendar starts at 8 a.m. And that's the time when the school starts. But it takes my kids one hour or one hour and 10 minutes to wake up, get dressed, eat the breakfast, do hygiene and go to school. And of course, she needs at least eight hours of sleep. Let's round it to nine hours. So what we have to do, we have to create automation that with 10 hours before the school starts, send the warning that she has to be in the bed. Let's put here 10 hours before, at condition, state, calendar school, message or the title of the event has to be this one here, and then create an action, call to service, PTS on mini me device Zeta go to bed you have school tomorrow save calendar Zeta school go to bed of course these automations here are very simple or simplified you can expand them or extend them the way you want. But what this automation would do, it would look at the calendar and 10 hours before the school starts, it would send automation or warning if it matches following. And the following needs to be event or future event needs to be Zeta school. Action in my case is text to speech by using Google speech services. Let's look at downside or the problem with this calendar. And maybe you should think of it before you go into the automations. If you have multiple kids and each of them has school at 8 o'clock, 
the system itself would not be triggered on the second automation or the second event. If we check calendar and look last week, we can see that one of my kids has school at 8 o'clock and the other one has at 14 or 2 p.m. But since the schedule of my other daughter is changed every two weeks, in this week, her schedule is in front of Zeta schedule. That means that this one will not be visible for the system. Because if we check developer tools, states for the calendar school, we can see that it shows only first event the system registers. So you would either have to change the start time for each of them, or what's even better is to create additional calendar for each of the kids. And that way each kid will have its own calendar, which is even better because then you can track in one calendar activities for one kid and in the other calendar the activities for the other kid. There are still a lot of things that can be added or improved in the current local calendar. But I really do think that it's a great addition and it allows us to expand on our system. And Home Assistant with it is becoming more and more powerful. I really would like to see some of your automations or ideas for the automations if you already haven't implemented inside Home Assistant. Don't forget, Home Assistant is a hobby. Don't get frustrated. Enjoy with the options and possibilities it allows you. And if you have any kind of a comment or question, ask either on the community forums or go to the Discord server. There are a lot of Discord servers and the link to my Discord server is in the video description. And while we are already on the subject of calendar, I think it's about time in this video to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me on the YouTube channel and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But of course, thanks to each and every one of you that have watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a YouTube channel member. And you can do that for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Thank you. But also, if you want, you can go and check out some of the merchandise in my merchandise store. The link to it is in the video description. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.